deflections here at the top are greater than those deflections here at the loaded contact line, whereas over here, this deflection is the largest of those in the body. I've gathered the Y displacements for the three different solutions and put them in a table. And here we see quite a good correlation between the three commercial codes. I guess you'd expect that more on displacement than stress because this is the displacement method of finite elements after all and we get good agreement on the displacements. So uh, whether you take the misaligned problem or the aligned problem, the results are, are very close. Now comparing one to the other, the factor is 1.9 on the increased displacement due to the misaligned load. Now let's look at some stress contour plots using the Nastran and the IDEAS results. Uh, this is a continuous tone figure done in ideas, and uh, this is for the aligned case. We show the upper limit here to be 111 megapascals. Now there's some averaging involved in this number. So the plot package itself may give slightly different numbers than the tabular values. In fact, I also did this figure with Patran and found a different number. Uh, so you need to know a little bit about how the stresses are being averaged in the analysis code and in the post-processing code. We can likewise show the von Mises stress contours for the misaligned load, again with Nastran and ideas. And here you see the hot spot where the eccentric load is acting. Uh, you also see a much higher stress value called out of some 460 megapascals here. Ideas also will give a discrete color pattern on the contour stress plot, and we show that here. Some people prefer this. It certainly does show the uh, point of application of a load being the hot spot and the uh, similar high stress here, which is the same as the continuous tone figure. Our last task in this laboratory is to compare the stresses in the gear tooth. I'm going to look at von Mises stresses at the um, critical point in the body and in the aligned load case, we got values of 142, 104, and 134. So those stresses were modest, and you can imagine that that would be a useful running stress for a typical gear. On the other hand, when the gear was misaligned and the load was eccentric, then you get these higher values, 563, 357, and 551. Uh, now, this is kind of an academic problem, so I'm not too worried right now about stress convergence. If we wanted to get more accuracy, we could put a more reasonable measure of that load and put it over a specific area. Uh, but in such a convergence study, we don't want to chase a singular stress. If you did this in the wrong way, you would end up getting just higher and higher stresses at the uh, contact point in question where the load was applied because the area on which that concentrated load acts is, is not uh, well defined. But I think as an academic problem, this was interesting and we certainly can do the parameter study of the aligned and the misaligned load.